Okay friends, I heard the call, it's time for some more art. The responses to my original Battleizer video were incredible. I'm so honored and touched that you all enjoyed my work. I know there were a lot of requests to continue with this Battleizer series, and I promise that's on my to-do list for later. For today, I have a bit of a different challenge that I wanted to task myself with. In that Battleizer video, I put my understanding of the Power Rangers design philosophy to the test by creating original, ultimate power-ups that would align with the season's aesthetic. Now let's switch franchises and ride on into Kamen Rider. <laughs> In terms of ultimate power-ups, the concept of final forms is nothing new to Ryder. As we progress with our titular writers throughout the year, the final form is an exciting reveal for us. It visually represents the culmination of our writers' powers through their respective journeys, as well as a long-term payoff from the show's run overall. While it's natural now for main writers to receive final forms, I wanted to put the focus on a bit of an underserved section of writers, tertiary writers. Especially during Heisei onward, the cast of writers usually ranges from a few to a handful, and it's natural that not everyone gets pimped out in immaculate fashion. Yes, usually secondary writers will receive unique final forms, but everyone else, yeah, they usually just get the scraps. So that's why I wanted to work on making some original final forms for three tertiary writers. Before I begin, I wanted to talk a bit about the differences between this challenge versus the previous one. With the original Battleizers, I had a catalog of red Battleizers to draw inspiration from, but ultimately the idea was to be as creative as possible. And while my goal was to stay within each season's respective design aesthetic, technically the very concept of the Battleizer meant to break and evolve on that aesthetic, so I didn't really have the most explicit boundaries to play within. The key difference for this challenge is that now I do have a pretty well-defined guideline to reference. Each season's writer will already have a final form, and while their gimmicks or concepts may not be 100% the same, the tertiary writer's final form should more or less follow suit with at least some part of the existing design philosophy. The writers I chose today will each have a bit of a different approach and sort of range in difficulty, but like the previous challenge, I wanted to make these final forms believable so that you can imagine them receiving these upgrades in some sort of special or something. So without further ado, let's kick things off with our first writer. Our first challenge comes to us in the form of Kamen Rider Chaser, the tertiary writer of Kamen Rider Drive. The reason I wanted to go with Chaser was that I always felt that his forms, or lack of forms, were a bit underwhelming. Sure, he did have his original Machine form, so technically he has some variety, but that combined form with him and Mach, while being symbolic, I always thought was just okay. So let's get to work. What kind of final form should Chaser get? Well, let's model it off Drive. Drive gets his final form based off his car, Trideron, so let's make Chaser's form be an integration of him and his bike. I looked up his bike and took it apart to create armor that looks like it's inspired by the bike and not necessarily just bike pieces plopped onto him. It is very similar to how Drive's is composed, except being a bit more symmetrical than his. There is also a huge overhaul in his helmet, as I think that is also a distinctive feature of type Trideron. I'll be honest, my very first thought was to do this for Mach, but since they both have the same bike and Chasers has flames, I thought going with Chase was a no-brainer. The name was a bit difficult though, because the bike is literally called the Ride Chaser, and I couldn't just call it Type Chaser. So, after some digging, I landed on the name, Common Rider Chaser Type Voltus. Voltus being the real-life model of both Mach and Chaser's bikes. Chaser accesses this form using the Vaultus signal bike that coats him in a fearsome and intimidating black with vibrant purple flames detailing his new armor as well as the crest of the ride Chaser being placed on the center of his helmet for all to fear. I like how this came out, especially how it so drastically contrasts with his default form, and of course I can't say no to drawing flames on armor, not at all. The next rider to receive a final form is Common Rider Snipe, the tertiary rider of Common Rider x -Aid. So this one was a bit interesting. x has his Hyper Muteki form with his glorious golden locks, but I decided not to model Snipe's form after that. After all, Gem already received his similar final form drawing heavily from Hyper Muteki, and that also does make a lot of sense because Gem and x are mirrors of each other. So the appropriate counterpart of Snipe is, well, Brave. This is pretty obvious since they do share a power-up method with the level 50 Gashat. Looking at it, Brave's final form is Tattle Legacy, a brilliant white knight that is actually a retool of Tattle Fantasy. So, my job now is to take Snipe's counterpart form to Tattle Fantasy, Bang Bang Simulation, and amp it up so it can stand on par with Tattle Legacy. My task became trying to think of what type of game would make sense to be a step up from a combat simulator. Honestly, my initial solution was to just add a crap ton of guns on him and call it a day, but then I got stuck on what his helmet should look like. After doodling, it hit me. What if his hairpiece flips up and opens outwards to create sort of a V-fin, like a Gundam? His mouthpiece even looks similar to a Gundam's as well. From here, the rest came pretty easy to me. Heavily inspired by heavy arms, I decided to upgrade Bang Bang Simulation to look more like mecha armor. Perhaps this new form is a result of a new mecha battle game, which is kind of timely since Gundam Breaker 4 just came out. 
This retool came pretty naturally since Snipes level 50 weapon spread is already kind of similar to Heavy Arms. I tried my best just to make it inspired by Heavy Arms and not to make the armor specifically based on it. Even though Legacy is mostly a recolor of fantasy, I decided to take some creative liberties with this one and move slash add some details that I thought would make it super impactful, like adding the wings from Jet Combat. So without further ado, here is Kamen Rider Snipe Mech Assault Gamer level 100 using the Gashat Bang Bang Mech Assault. Taking his affinity for shooting games to the next level, the Mech Assault Gamer allows Snipe to not just use the weapon, but to become the weapon. Armed with wings and two sets of double Gatling guns and armor that is capable of launching an all-out missile barrage. This piece was actually really challenging, I'm not fantastic with mechanical detailing, so seeing this one come together was so satisfying. I was also in a mild debate about the color scheme because I wanted it to stand out well next to Habubuteki and Tata Legacy, but I felt that a palette inspired by Endless Waltz Heavy Arms worked perfectly. The last writer I wanted to grant a final form to is none other than Common Rider Ryugen, the tertiary writer from Common Rider Gaim. So this one presented its own challenge in itself. The main and secondary writers have two very different executions of final or upgraded forms. Baron has his Lemon Energy Arms, which is a standard, albeit slightly enhanced armament style of the series. Gaim has his Kiwami Arms, which is basically his god mode that combines all the fruit powers. Obviously Ryugen can't have a Kiwami type form, and just giving him an energy arm seems way too easy. So I decided to meet somewhere halfway and give him a form similar to Gaim's Kachidoki Arms. The reason I chose this is because Kachidoki Arms visually enhances the orange concept as well as the samurai armor. So a Kachidoki type form for Ryugen would allow us to really evolve on the Chinese warrior armor that his concept is based on, and not to mention that it would be amped up enough to be considered a final form. At first I tried to come up with an entirely new practical armor piece that would transform from a bunch of grapes, but I realized that I really couldn't improve on Kachidoki at all, so I left the armor as is and put more effort into upgrading his helmet. In my opinion, this is where I could exercise the most freedom in making it look like enhanced Chinese warrior armor. While technically this task was a bit easier, there were loads of details that I had to account for, so this was probably the most challenging piece of the three. To close things out, we have... Kamen Rider Ryugen Dynasty Arms Via the Dynasty Lock Seed, Ryugen is presented with Grand Grape Armor that drastically enhances his combat abilities. In place of the flags that Gaim receives in his Kachidoki form, Dynasty grants Ryugen with a fierce and flowing cape that emphasizes his grandeur and majesty. I'm glad I could wrest some of my creativity from the actual armor and divert it into his helmet. I'd always noticed that Gaim's Kachidoki helmet looks like he has a mustache, so I took this opportunity to give Ryugen a very Guan Yu-esque mustache for himself. I was also worried that unchanging the actual armor would look too much like Gaim's samurai style, but I do think the cape really drives in the Chinese armored look. And here are our three new tertiary rider final forms. What do you think? Do you think these forms could exist in an alternate timeline of their respective series? Thank you all again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed these new pieces that add to the art portfolio. Like I shared on my community page and my Twitter, I'll be working on more art more regularly so we can bring some new and imaginative ideas to life. That's all I have for you today. I'll be back next time with some more fun Toka topics to Toka talk about. See you all next time.